Hello, this is Bilal, your economic instructor. Today, we will be discussing MCQs for the topic long run costs in A2. So, let's get started. Fourfold increase in all firms' input result in threefold increase in output. What does this illustrate? Now, fourfold means four times, threefold means three times. So the factors of production are increasing four times, whereas the output is increasing three times. Now this is bad for the company. This is bad for the organization. And this concept is known as diminishing returns to scale or decreasing returns to scale. Let's look at the options. So the first option is the option we discussed and hence every other option is incorrect. Now law of diminishing returns is short run concept right therefore this is not the right answer long run would always have two scale which shows that the scale of production has increased okay a very horrific graph the diagram shows the long run average cost lrac and three short run average costs SRAC, SRAC2, SRAC3 for individual firms. Each short run average cost curve represents fixed factors of production. Right, so we have three short run graphs and the lowest points of each short run graphs are joined in order to construct a long term graph. Between levels output OL and OM which statement is not correct. All right, so the long run average cost is decreasing right so this means that there is economies of scale if we look at the long run average cost see so this is basically economies of scale and we look at the short run graph the short run average cost is increasing which is showing diminishing the returns right so both concepts are correct we look at long run we get to know its economies of scale. We look at short run, we get to know that it's diminishing returns, a short run concept. Let's look at the option and see which is correct. Average costs are falling. Average fixed costs are falling. Oh, okay. This can be the right answer because every time we increase the production, average fixed cost might fall, right? Economies of scale are being experienced this is also correct now we need to look at the statement which is not correct now average fixed costs are falling because the number of output is increasing the average fixed cost continuously decreases as output increases so this is correct economies of scale is being experienced this is correct we need to look at the wrong answer law of diminishing return is operative yes this is correct decreasing returns to scale no Decreasing returns to scale means diseconomies of scale. So diseconomies of scale hasn't operated because it will operate after point X. So this is diseconomies of scale and diminishing returns to scale. Hence, the right answer is D because it's the incorrect option. Moving on to the third MCQ, which one of the long term benefits to a firm of vertical integration, which is the long term benefit. Let's look at all the benefits. A concentration on activities in which the firm has comparative advantage. So vertical integration means we are integrating with our supplier or a consumer. A reduction in the total cost involved in agreeing contracts with other firms. Now, this can be the option because when we are merging with our suppliers we don't need to make contracts we don't need to negotiate we can buy it at cost because we are the same when we are negotiating when we are integrating with our customers we don't need to make a contract then right so now we don't need to make contracts hence the cost of contracts would decrease an increase in the firm's market share well this is incorrect this could have been correct had there been horizontal integration an improvement in efficiency resulting from increased use of market incentives. Um, the efficiency would increase resulting in increased use of market incentives. This basically means pricing. So uh, this is not the correct answer because increased use of market incentives. 
this is incorrect because market incentives has something to do with the prices and because we are not horizontally integrating our market share is not changing therefore in market incentives would not be there therefore this is incorrect hence b is the right answer x and y merge in horizontal integration what must be true about the industry and stage of production in which x and y operate so it's a horizontal integration they are in the same level same stage of production and in the same industry so easy peasy d is the answer moving on r manufactures steel s produces ships t is an oil tanker v operates in cruise liners which statement is correct r takes over s now r and s steel and ship okay this is a vertical integration and if r takes over s it's a vertical forward integration yes because s is a customer of r so let's look at other options if s takes over v this is an example of backward integration s takes over v. it's an example of vertical integration but a forward integration because s produces ships and this is cruise liners so it can be a vertical forward integration not backward t takes over s t is oil tankers and s is ships this is an example of diversification well uh, this can be an example of vertical integration because um, oil is basically a supplier for sh ship producers so it's a raw material oil tankers so it's not oil uh, petrol it's oil tankers so the tanks in which we store oil so that is needed for ships right so it's a vertical integration not a diversification v takes over s this is an example of horizontal no this is not horizontal because they're not competitors v and s are in different stages of the production what is an example of backward integration backward vertical integration bakery buying wheat farm well this is correct because bakery's raw material is wheat which is a vertical backward integration car manufacture buying showroom now this is vertical forward integration hence this is incorrect a vineyard buying apple orchard so vineyard is buying apple orchard uh, it's a backward integration but we don't produce wine from apples we, we, we produce wines from grapes so that's why it's not a correct answer two rival supermarkets this is a horizontal integration so what would be the reason why small firms do not survive okay because in certain industries there are economies of scale well this is the right answer large firms have economies of scale their average total cost falls hence small firms cannot produce cheaper goods and they are out of the market small firms often supply personal services so if they're providing personal services they would survive hence this is wrong small firm often supply products the size of the market for which is limited if the size is limited the size of firms will also be limited for example if i am selling cancer treatment my market size will be small because there will be only limited people buying my product but if i sell panadol or paracetamol my market size is big i can sell to large people many people hence my market size would be bigger and the size of the firm would be bigger if the size of the firm is bigger small firms won't be able to sustain but if the size of the industry is small like in cancer the size of the firms will be small and the competition would not lead to any small firm giving out or making losses or shutting down so c is not the answer small owners managed firms involve less risk now if a small business has less risk it will survive so hence this is also incorrect question number 8 which combination of statement about small firms and large firms is correct 
small firms are more common in manufacturing industries well this is incorrect manufacturing industries usually have larger firms are more numerous than large firms yes this is correct with a large firm there will be only few large firms small firms there will be many small firms so this can be the right answer let's look at c can do well when each item produced must be different yes this is also correct because when each item is differently produced you cannot operate at large scale so small firms will operate better at c cannot have any monopoly power well d is also correct small firms do not have monopoly powers now let's look at large firms do not experience diseconomies of scale well this is incorrect large firms do experience diseconomies of scale may arise from internal growth or mergers well this is also correct a large firm may become large because of merging or internal growth well this is correct cannot earn super normal profits well this is incorrect large firms can earn abnormal profits way more than we can imagine so the answer is c in many developed economies large and small firms often exist side by side in the same industry what is most likely to explain the survival of small firms they offer a much variety range of products well a cannot be answered because small firms cannot provide a large variety of goods small firms would provide specific types of goods they have a higher minimum efficient scale now this means that the atc is lowest now small firms have a higher minimum efficient scale which means we have to sell more units in order for our atc average cost to be lowest so this is not the answer because if it takes a lot of time for the ATC to be uh, lower, um, small firms would usually quit because they won't be able to get lower cost and the larger firms would get lower costs, small firms could not compete. They pay much higher wages to their staff. Small firms cannot pay higher wages, they don't earn that much profits they provide more personal level of consumer service well this is the right answer now the bad thing is we need to read all the points before coming to the right answer when the answer is d but this should be your habit even if the answer is a you should go through all the options in order to get to the right answer in many developed economies clothes are designed by small firms and retailed by large firm what is most likely explanation for this pattern okay clothes design firms they need to be flexible to cope with frequent fashion changes well this is well this is correct need to employ highly specialized and skilled workers this is correct need to operate at high minimum efficient scale well not necessarily okay let's let's say that this is also correct but what does this mean that we need to operate at a point where the atc is lowest need to overcome high barriers to industry well uh, need to overcome high barriers to entry into the industry small and retail well this can be also correct let's look at the option design firms compared to retail firms now retail firms are large let's keep that in mind all right need to exploit marketing economies of scale yes we need to have a lot of marketing so a is correct need to operate at low minimum efficient scale well does not necessarily mean that we need to produce at the point where atc is lowest we can produce at other points and still be profitable so although it's correct but it's not the best answer need to offer a wide range of products to survive yes and because this is incorrect this is also incorrect small firms do not necessarily need to operate at a point where atc is lowest right now need to take advantage of technical economies of scale well this is also correct and this when there are small firms the barrier to entry is also 
low. Had there been bigger firms, they would have advertised, marketed and the barrier to entry would have been high. So this is also incorrect. So the best option seems to be A. Now MCQs like this are very consuming, are time consuming and very confusing. So we need to look at all the options and carefully analyze them before coming to the right answers. Right. So if you have any questions, you can ask. I hope you got something to learn out of it. See you soon. Thank you.